right, guys. So today in how not to suck at teaching. All right. So things I want to cover today is testing doesn't work. Testing testing is just an awful awful contraption. And what do I mean by testing doesn't work? Testing doesn't work on on the basic levels of how are we accurately gauging a student's success. Basically, in a nutshell, how how are we doing that? Uh, testing is an analog system that has yet to evolve into a digital age. That's the first hurdle that everybody has to solve in working on a new test solution. Testing is still, let's get a Scantron, a number two pencil, and bubble it in. All right, let's first talk about the number two pencil because that's like the number one thing that I have. Um, I get questions about like all the time. Like, is this a number two pencil when I'm in testing? Is this number two pencil? Because I'm the art teacher. I should know these things, and I do. And the point of the number two pencil is the strength of the graphite that is inside the pencil and how it reacts to the paper. There are different number levels of pencil and it falls into the A or sorry into the H or B range. H is for hard, B is for bold. Bold stands for how dark it can color because if you use a 7B pencil you can literally just do a dot and it blacks out the whole um the whole scantron little bubble thing in like half a twist and they don't want you doing that so that you actually have to think about the answer that you're putting down and that's the reason why they choose the number two pencil um also it's the standard pencil any pencil that is not an art in an art kit and has labeled for uh, a different graphite it's all number two that is the standard kind of pencil. Um, it's the same as gas. You're only knowing that you're getting uh, a higher level of gas if you hit the uh, plus or the premium button. And I say that because I'm driving past uh, BP right now. So what else do we need to know about testing? Why it doesn't work? Well, here's the thing. If you're having an ABCD test, how can you act adequately address a student understands and is applying the knowledge that they learn by bubbling in a circle? Well, they're reading the question and they're assessing it based upon what the answer is. Okay, let's follow that logic a little more. If I randomly guess on a test in a number of bubbles, and let's say that my random guesses then give me a perfect score of 100. Do the people who are grading the test think, look at that score and say, oh, this student knows something. When they actually didn't, they just cheated the test. Or those kids who actually know the answer to the question, but the question was phrased in an in a, in incorrect way to where they are going to get it wrong. If, um, if Stephen has X amount of apples and Jill comes up and wants to take some apples, how many oranges does Bobby have? We don't know that because it wasn't a properly worded question. And how many of those questions are actually worded that way on a test? And I get very angry about this as I've been on the curriculum writing team, test writing team, and I'm writing these questions and I'm thinking in my head, how is a student going to think about the solution to this question? Instead of like most of the time, most people think of, I need a test question that answers that is about this type of knowledge. You can't give a test question that only addresses the knowledge that the student is supposed to gain unless you can adequately also say how a student is to think about achieving the answer to that question. Test education in general is all about how much knowledge can we throw into a brain before it explodes. That is the education in a nutshell. When we are at an age now where we have to identify with a student and how a student is perceiving and interpreting knowledge. They are, students today are not only getting knowledge from the schoolhouse as it was done a hundred years ago because that's the way it was. You didn't learn anything except for how to do the run the farm the way daddy told you to run the farm and then you went to the schoolhouse to learn how to read the books so that you could manage the money for the for the family. That's what you learn. Nowadays, a student, <clears throat> a student is not gaining knowledge in the classroom only anymore. A student goes home, they watch TV, they're becoming into educational programming for some kids. For some other kids, you're seeing uh, socially adaptable education where you're applying knowledge based upon a social interaction, a social structure. And then you have the internet. And the internet is a number and of ways to learn and process and gain information. Not all of it is correct because we have yet to teach our students on how to differentiate between proper and improper sources of material and where 
actual information is coming from and where falsified information is coming from. We have to teach that to them. No kid knows that. Half the adults out there don't know that. It's one of those things we have to, as a society, teach each other so that we become a more productive, intelligent society because no one understands that you have to actually do some groundwork and go find the answer instead of, oh, well, I'm going to listen to this person and, and they, they probably are right. No, they're not. Not always. Sometimes. Not always. So when we think about testing, we take, think about this analog system, how can we adapt it, change it so it's much more conducive to the learner that is today? We are not thinking of the learner of yesterday anymore. We have to think of the learner of the future. If you want anything to be future proof, you have to be constantly evolving the thought process and how you're going to adapt it to future generations in a nutshell. As always, make sure that you please like and subscribe to the video, I, and I look forward to seeing the comments on this. I want to know the two cents of you guys. What, how do you think that learning is changing? How do you think testing is evolving and changing? How do you think, uh, do you think that any of this that I've said was right or wrong? I, I want to know from you. If you think I'm wrong, by all means, tell me. Uh, otherwise, no one's learning anything. All right, as always, I'll see you guys next class. Until then, later, guys.